Anyang KGC clinched the Korea Basketball League Championship last Sunday. They swept the regular season leaders at Chunju KCC Aegis, winning four games in the best of seven series. In fact, they swept the whole postseason, posting 10 consecutive wins, the first in KBL history. One Anyang player who particularly dominated the court is former NBA forward Jared Sullinger. He was named the MVP of the playoffs and during the title-clinching game, he scored 42 points. That's half of the team's final score of 84. To tell us about his championship win and his time in Korea, we have now Jared Sullinger in the studio with us today for this week's Touch Base in Seoul. Mr. Sullinger, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. And it's especially an honour as our Career 24 staff has been in contact with your team uh, over the last couple of months now to invite you to the show. And we finally have you here with us today, so <laughs> we appreciate the time you made for us. Now, congratulations on winning the KBL Championship and being named the MVP of the playoffs. Can you tell us how you feel and what was the first thought that went through your mind when you realized that you'd won? Um, First thought was like I get to go see my wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> I get to go see my wife and kids right. after all the Who hard in the work. US? Yes, back in the US. So mm. after all that hard work, uh, I get to see my wife and kids and, and get to hug them and kiss them. But at the same time, I enjoyed it. Mm. I really did uh, through the whole process that we went through, um, you know, with everything that's going on with me and my career uh, and finally be able to win a championship as a professional. You don't get that often. Mm. And this all happened only after you joined late in the regular season and made your debut in March. Uh, but you seem to have fitted into the team effortless, effortlessly. What was it like working with this team? Um, you got to give the players the, the credit, honestly, players and, and the coaches. Um, when I came here, I had to fit in with them. Um, well, so I thought it was more like they was trying to fit in with me and they let me be who I wanted to be. Mm. And, um, when they did that, uh, it kind of became a seamless transition. And so when you, when you go down the line and you think about, you know, this team, cause they're going to, we're going to be talked about in, in KBO history. Mm. But when you talk about this team, you got to give everybody their credit, not just me. Well, you've personally been given the nickname Professor Sol or Sol Gyosu by your Korean fans because of the way you quote-unquote educate your opponents. Uh, what was your reaction when you heard this, uh, Monica? Do you like it? The first thing I heard uh, when I heard it, I thought about my mom. Uh, my mom's a teacher back in the States. <laughs> my dad, my dad's a teacher, uh, was a teacher back in the States mm. at the high school level. So when, when they told me I was a professor, that's technically a step above um, being a high school <laughs> teacher. And uh, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. And, mm. and I knew my mom loved it. And she, she keeps calling me that. I don't know why, but she keeps calling me that. And she thinks that she gets a kick out of it. Maybe it will stick with you for uh, your future of your career as well. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. You know, I, I like I like to be able to you know teach our, teach my opponents how to play, and mm. um, on the same time, I just I love the game of basketball. I missed it so much. Yes, you've had an incredible time here. Uh, as I said, you met, joined the team in March, but can you tell us a little bit about your journey to Korea? You had a successful high school and college career in the U.S. before being a first round pick for the Boston Celtics in the 2012. Uh, NBA draft, but I understand you've had difficulties with injuries in your career. Yeah, I had I had a lot of injuries, back, foot, um, foot, then back again. Um, so it was just you know be able to overcome all that and still win, be able to win a championship and come mm. here. Um, Anyang KGC gave me a, a opportunity like nobody else did. Everybody else thought I was done after being gone um, on a hiatus for two years. Mm. And uh, the head coach gave me a call, and, and, and I'm forever in debt to him just because he gave me that opportunity to showcase what I can do. And uh, he let me play at, at, at the way that I wanted to play and, and to help the team win. So, you know, I'm I'm forever thankful for KGC. That's right. Before Anyang, you were with the Shenzhen Aviators in China, but that was in 2017 to 2018, and then you spent two years without a team. What was that period like? Can you tell us about that? Well, in the meantime, my, my wife got pregnant with our with our twins, uh, Jared, Jared Jr. and and Jim and Marie. Um, and so I was just I looked at it as an opportunity to be there for my wife, be there for my wife through all the you know ups and downs of pregnancy, and and uh, just you know be by her side. She's always she's been by my side since day one. So it was time for me to return the favor. I just think that's how God set it up for me to return the favor and then get back to the game after the kids got you know kind of self-sufficient on their own and um he gave me he returned me with with a great team and and, and be able to get a championship so i'm i'm forever uh thankful how did you stay in shape during that time and keep sharp during that time 
Uh, we, you know, I have I have a great team behind me. Um, I have Matt Wine Scott that uh, he helps me with my strength and conditioning. I have my um, basketball trainer in, in LD Williams, who recently retired from the game of basketball, now getting to personal training for ba- uh, for basketball skills. So I had a lot of people in my corner that you know really pushed me to be um, the best person I can be, and was able to you know be the guy that that needed to be on KGC to win the basketball game or, or win a championship. So I'm just I'm just thankful for the support system that I have back at home. Can you tell us about that approach by KGC then? Uh, how did that come about and what was your reaction when they uh, approached you like that? Well, it was late February. Um, I was trying to hold out and try to get to the G League, but, you know, the G League got closed. Um, I was trying to get to China, but China didn't want me. Um, and then, you know, Ayan KGC came out of nowhere and, and kind of swooped me off my feet. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, wanted the opportunity to play and showcase myself. And uh, they gave me that opportunity. And um, so th- it came late February. And as soon as they called, I took it. What was it like returning to the court after two years? Oh, man, it was, it was I cried before the game. Oh, wow. I cried before the game just because two years, you know, nobody nobody thought I would be here uh, and then have the opportunity to play again and be able to do something that I truly love. Um, after all the hard work and sacrifice that I put in for two years, um, I, I, I was I was just blown away uh, to be able to step foot on that floor again. Now that you've won a championship and the MVP, do you think you've uh, made your doubters uh, fear you now? Yeah, I, I, I truly believe so. Um, I just feel like I can get better as well. Um, you know, being two years away from the game, I had to knock some rust off. There still was rust out there when I was playing. So, um, you know, just got just got to continue to get better. You know, that, that's one thing I learned about the game of basketball. You can't be the same basketball player every year. You have to come back and you have to improve yourself. You have to add something to your game. And um, I think that's 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 the goal is just, you know, go back home, get back into the lab and, and, and add something to my game. Do you think you're back to full fitness now? And are you ready for more? Uh yeah, I think I'm back to full fitness, and I'm, I think I'm ready for more. I I think I truly do, just because you know the last what ten games of the of, of the playoffs, coach <laughs> played me forty, so I, I think I think I'm back. <laughs> right, right. So you've been tested, and so you know you're back. It was a short time in Korea, though, uh, an odd time as well, especially with the COVID nineteen situation, with uh, limited spectators due to all that. What have you made of the KBL though? I love it. I love it. It's, it's physical. Um, it's fair, and 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 the players they play hard. Every mm. no matter you know where they're at on the standings, they play hard, and and that's what you can appreciate. You can appreciate that because they're not disrespecting the game. It's not like hey, I'm just ready to go home. No, everybody plays hard. Everybody does their part, and everybody stays true to the game. And you love that. Was that a surprise for you? How hard they played? Uh, not really. I I had a couple friends that talked to me. Um, Vernon Macklin, Devin Scott, uh, Nate Miller, who who played here um, about two or three years ago, um, they all told me that you know they play hard. Mm. They play hard, and 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 they're nonstop runners, and and that's exactly what it was. It was <laughs> an up and down game. Everybody ran hard. Everybody played hard. They played physical. Um, sometimes the ref let a little too much stuff go, but it it was <laughs> it, it was fun. It was really 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 fun to be out there and, and, and see see guys really respect the game. Were there any see, differences that you saw, or any difficulties that you had acclimatizing to uh, the league or your time in Korea? Uh, I just think the physicality of under the rim. You know, so what you what we call a foul in you know Europe, maybe even China, um, in the United States, they don't really call it a foul here. So you know, you had to you had to learn how to finish through contact, and I think that really helped me um, going forward is to be able to finish through contact. Um, you know, around the bucket, especially around the bucket. You still dominated during your time, even through all that physical uh, play. And it was perhaps great for the league as well to have a player of your calibre playing here. Do you have any advice for younger uh, players out there in Korea, or even the coaches and management uh, about the game from one you've seen so far? No, uh, you just, you just got to keep moving the game forward. You know, everything can't be the same way. Sometimes it's okay to think outside the box. And I think uh, my head coach, when he, when I came here, he allowed me to help him think outside the box. And he and the thing that, that made him such a great head coach is that 
he he was willing to listen and willing to trust. And that's one thing you have to do as a basketball coach is understand that those guys that's out there on the floor, they see the game a little bit different than what you see on the sideline. They're feeling the bumps. They know where the, where the help's coming from. They they know where, you know, the angles to pass. And when you have somebody out there on the floor that you can trust and you and you listen and you understand, um I think that just enhances your coaching ability because you're able to add in what you see on the sideline and add in what the players see on the floor. So it's it's a it's a little give and take that that coach really did with with me and and we got the job done by doing that. If you had to sum up your time here in Korea in one word or one phrase, what would it be? Amazing, amazing, Simply amazing. That. Just mm. because uh, you know when you look at this the stats, when you look at the the history that we made, nobody ever swept the playoffs. Mm. You know, so when us sweeping the playoffs, they're always going to talk about it. Talk about us and and what we did, um, and that's going to be for a long time coming. I don't I don't see a lot of teams doing that um, here recently. Um, so whenever you talk about breaking records, you you have to speak about Young KGC in twenty 2020, twenty 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 and twenty twenty one. Finally, Mr. Salinger, what's next for you? Would you be staying in Korea? Would that be an option, or do you have aspirations, perhaps, to even return to the NBA? Uh, my options are open. My mm. options are real open, but you know the ultimate goal is to return back to the NBA. But if, if that doesn't happen, my options are open, so I'm, I'm willing to listen to any and every call. And just to wrap up, then, is there anything you'd like to say to Korean fans out there who have enjoyed your extraordinary performances this year? I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, you know, going through the two years of, uh, of trials and tribulations of, of what I went through, I appreciate every one of you just because you, you've been loyal, you've been respectful, and, and you've been thankful. And I'm thankful for you more than you even know. Well, it's been great to have you here with us today. Good luck on your next move. And uh, we're thankful that you came to Korea as well. We've been speaking to KBL champion and playoffs MVP, Jared Solinger of Anyang KGC. Thank you for speaking to us today. Thanks for having me.